Hello and welcome to episode 4 of Janking Off. Today I'll present you Psychic Rover FTK. This deck is a really funny way to play sprites and it can not only FTK, it can also break bots quite easily. I will first explain what this deck tries to do, then I'll go over all the cards and at the end of the video you will find replays of this deck in action. This deck tries to abuse Psychic Rover. This is a common printed in Darkwing Blast and many people slept on this effect. When it's sent to the graveyard you can roll a 6 sided die and if you roll anything but a 1 or a 6 you can special summon this card from the graveyard and then you are locked out of the extra deck. Also this card has an on summon effect that you can roll a six sided die and if you roll a one or a six you can get two non-targeting pops. None of these effects are once per turns and it's really easy to abuse them. Um, you try to send this to the graveyard technically infinite times if we had good luck with Shadow Priestress of Ohm or Tomb Cannon Soldier to inflict burn damage to eventually FTK your opponent. Shadow Priestress of Ohm can inflict 800 damage to your opponent and Tomb Cannon Soldier can inflict 500 damage to your opponent per tribute but Tomb Cannon Soldier is way more searchable because you play three Tomb Table of Contents. Let's jump right into the cards. We are playing 3 Jet as well as 3 Blue, just because these are the best sprite names, as well as 1 Red. Then we are playing 3 Psychic Rover, uh, just because the effect is not even once per copy or, uh, I don't know, <laughs> restricted in any other means. It's really fun to abuse this and this being a Psychic level 2 means you can summon it with Emergency Teleport from the deck or you can summon it with Gigantic from the deck. Then we are playing our FTK enablers. We are playing two Shadow Priestress of Ohm and two Toon Cannon Soldier. Uh, you can, if you open multiple of these, banish the second copy with an old word to just draw more cards and get rid of the card you cannot use. Then we are playing some cards to special summon cards from the deck. We are playing a Reasoning. This can uh, make our opponent declare a level between 1 and 12. Then we excavate cards from the top of our deck. And when we excavate a monster that can be normal, summoned or set, we check if it was the level our opponent declared. And if it's not the level, we can special summon it. And if it's the level, it's just sent to the graveyard. The good thing about this is that our opponent might declare a 2 because he knows I'm on Sprite and we play Rover, so if this is sent to the graveyard we can just special summon it, so uh, this is just a free summon from the deck most of the time. Then we are playing two Sprite Starter, uh, because it's a hard once per turn, it's uh, not a monster we could banish with Allure if we open too many with it, and we can just search it with Jet. Then we are playing three e -Tally just to summon a Rover from the deck, and a Foolish Burial to send a Rover to the graveyard, <laughs> as well as a Monster Gate. This can technically just tribute a rover which locks us out of the extra deck to summon another monster from our deck. So you can get rid of the extra deck lock this way even though you maybe don't have a shadow priestress or a tomb cannon soldier yet and you can just get a free summon from the deck. Then some cards that can summon monsters from the graveyard. We are playing two telekinetic power well. This is one of the most underrated cards ever probably printed. Uh, this can special summon any number of level 2 or lower psychic monsters from our graveyard. It can technically summon 5 monsters from your graveyard and it's not a hard once per turn as well. And it's a quick play spell so you can set this and summon like 3 psychic rovers on your opponent's turn to get 6 non-targeting pops if you want to. It's super cool to play this card. Then we are playing a monster rebound. Uh, this is limited sadly, but you can with this summon link monsters as well or other really cool monsters and this just helps you to to play a bit longer. Sometimes I had uh, used up all my rover effects because I maybe had bad die rolls and then I could just monster reborn, get the rover again, tribute rover, rover F and graveyard and do it all over again. Then we are playing two dice dungeon. When this is activated we can add a dimension dice from our deck to the hand. And Dimension says, Dice says, if you control a card uh, with a card effect that requires a die roll, you contribute one monster, special summon one monster with an effect that requires a die roll from your hand or deck. Um, yeah, this can get rid of our rovers that lock us out of the extra deck as well, and it just summons another rover from the deck. Then we can choose to not use the rover in the graveyard if we don't want to be locked out of the extra deck again, for example, and just trigger the on summon effect of the other rover. So this can basically just enable you to link climb a bit better and it gives you additional pops if you go second. 
then we are playing a terraforming just to search the dice dungeon because it's a field spell and we can technically search the zombie world in our side deck with the terraforming as well. Then um, the rest of the cards are just things to thin the deck or things to find other things easier. We are playing three Toon Table of Contents. It's really nice that this can search Toon Table of Contents. So you can just, if you have an Allure plus a, a Cannon Soldier in hand, you can uh, Table of Contents, Table of Contents, Table of Contents, get another Cannon Soldier, Allure, banish the Cannon Soldier, and you thin your deck by four cards and you could draw two cards. It's really, really cool to use this. Then we are playing a Tactics. Um, it's a hard ones per turn, so we are only playing one of it, but it allows us to maybe draw cards if we want to, it allows us to uh, take control of our opponent's monsters if we go second. It's just a really, really good one-off. Then we are playing two Desires, because Desires is a plus one, <laughs> and we are playing three Illu of Darkness, because all of our monsters except red in the main deck are dark and we can just banish multiple copies of monsters that we can't use with this in our hand. Uh, the extra deck is really interesting as well. We are playing two gigantic because sometimes you want to use another gigantic after turn turn two, for example. And uh, the rest is just link monsters. We are playing for our link force an access code talker, which we can climb with Celine into rather easily, but it's not that easy. But technically, Shadow Priestess is a spellcaster, and you can summon Shadow Priestess from the deck. It's not pretty, but it's a way to get Shadow Priestress from the deck as well, if you got spells in the graveyard, but yeah, it's you don't need to use it, use it many times. Then we are playing an uh, Avramax, we can summon this with an IP as well. Uh, a Bomber Dragon, which is really funny as well, because uh, we can just summon a Psychic Rover to his own Bomber Dragon points to in our opponent's turn, and then we can tribute the uh, trigger the Psychic Rover on summon, uh, trigger the Bomber Dragon on summon, and we got um, at least two... Um, uh, at least we got the main monster zones wiped with Bomber Dragon, and we can then uh, roll a six-sided die to maybe get two more additional non-targeting pops. And then if we want to, we can just summon Rover again to his own Bomber Dragon points, and just do it over and over again. Technically, you could play for time with this, but please don't do this. Um, yeah, then our Link 3s, we are playing a Unicorn, uh, which we could summon with an IP as well, or we can just use it to climb into access code, as well as the already mentioned Selene, uh, which could summon us the Shadow Priestress from the deck. Then a Dark, just because it's really good and it can help Link climb as well. A Nightmare, just to have spell trap removal, a uh, two elf because elf can summon rover, and uh, that's just really really good. <laughs> you can you can even make the elf with like a rover, then uh, trigger a rover in the graveyard, summon rover back, tribute rover with something, um, elf summon rover from the graveyard, trigger rover, use elf and rover to make it gigantic, gigantic, summon another rover from the deck, make another link too. It's so cool to use this. Uh, sadly, this card is a bit expensive, so I don't own it in paper. <laughs> then we are playing an IP uh, just to make the Avramax, to make a unicorn or something. It's it's just nice to have a link summon in your opponent's turn. And a proxy dragon. Uh, proxy dragon is really cool because it says that if a card you control would be destroyed by battle or card effect, you, control, you can destroy one of your monsters this card points to instead. So you can just um, destroy rovers over and over that this card points to and just Trigger the on summon Fs, trigger the on summon Fs, trigger the on summon Fs. It's really, really funny to play this deck, I have to be honest. Then we are playing a sprint because Rover triggers when being sent from the deck to the graveyard as well. And this can, like, it has a bounce or something. It never came up when I played this deck, but it sends from the deck, which sometimes comes up. And finally, we are playing an Al Mirage because you can. Uh, normal summon rover, make an Almirage, trigger rover in the graveyard, summon rover, and then use something like Dimension Dice to tribute the rover to summon another rover from the deck. Yeah. <laughs> in the side deck, we're just playing some uh, mostly generic board breakers. We're playing evenly matched uh, Zombie World for the Flunder matchup and Lightning Storm. And then we are playing some Spice. We are playing three enemy controller. Uh, enemy controller can just tri tribute the rover to take control of an opponent's monster. Uh, so it's it's a board break, it's a quick effect, it's a way to get a rover to the graveyard on our opponent's turn. Uh, if we want to set this going first, it's a way to break boards. It's just really, really cool. And then we are playing three Inferno... Inferno Reckless Summon. <laughs> I thought this was called Inferno, my bad. Um, 
When one monster is summoned with like less than 1500 attack to our side of the field and our opponent controls a monster, which is why we can't play this in the FTK build, uh, we can summon as many copies of that monster from our hand, deck and graveyard in attack position. And then our opponent can like choose a monster they control and summon as many monsters with the same name from hand, deck and graveyard. Uh, thing is, if they only control stuff summoned from the extra deck, they don't get any summons and we can summon two rovers from the deck with this or from the graveyard with this. It's really, really cool and this card is not a hard one to turn as well, so it, it's super funny to abuse this deck. Um, I will now show you some replays of this deck in action. 